And that's how you use a camera. Uh, who are you? I am a creative filmmaker turned creative entrepreneur. I'm a top level sort of guy. I didn't ask that, but I'm a filmmaker too. What do you do? Um, what are you doing in my room? Well, I'm glad you asked. I build business systems and strategies. I create brands from zero. So you're not gonna tell me how you're I do web 3.0, crypto, digital real estate, and other internet flexes. What does that have to do with anything? Stocks? Hmm, what else? What else? Oh, and get this, my low tier friend. I do all of this through video. What, what kind of video? Video content. You know the creatively entrepreneurial type using YouTube to tell stories. What's the story? I just get B-roll. That's, that's it? That's exactly it. So what's the B-roll of? Of me filming with a camera, okay. doing camera things. Your camera isn't on. <laughs> Impossible. As a... Yeah. Well, maybe instead you should consider turning yourself on. I'm leaving. And that is how you film a story. Filmmaking as a niche on YouTube is dead. And I'm saying this as a YouTube channel that's primarily filmmaking. I wouldn't even recommend starting a filmmaking channel, even if you have the skill set. Filmmaking itself had a few phases on YouTube. We had the vlogging era with the wildly entertaining daily adventures of Casey Neistat. We learned to be videographers, photographers, and editors as we watched Peter McKinnon religiously every week. We lived vicariously through Sam Calder, J.R. Lee, Ben Tike, and so many others in the cinematic travel video era. We were absolutely blown away when Daniel Schiffer and Peter Lindgren showed us what we can do in 30 seconds throughout the cinematic B-roll era. And I'm sure there's so many other eras that I haven't even mentioned. But over the last few years, filmmaking, as it continues to breathe on this platform, is slowly but surely dying. And I wanted to share why I think it absolutely is. The first reason is that the barrier of entry for filmmaking has dropped so low, it practically doesn't even exist anymore. Nowadays, we have cell phones that are capable of retaining a quality of video that is comparable to that of a $4,000 mirrorless camera, which in a lot of ways is amazing. People like me who couldn't even fathom the idea of creating video with a camera can now easily pull out their phones and build digital empires. We can all create works of art and forms of self-expression with video through a simple piece of technology that sits in our pockets every day. And that's all we talk about, the positive aspects of that. But just like anything else, I think we need to consider deeply what the negatives can be. With the barrier of entry being so low because of how accessible technology has made filmmaking, we start to lose the depth of the craft. What I mean by that is that because of the conveniences of our phones, the amount of creative effort, filmmaking elements such as narrative or sound design, even just the appreciation for the craft of filmmaking all starts to get pushed to the side. And because of that, filmmaking becomes more and more shallow on the platform. It seems that creators tip towards creating videos that foster views or jump on a trend, but it's ironic because the ones that get the most reception end up being the most genuine videos like Ryan Cow's Stop Being a Perfectionist or the most truly creative videos like Peter Lindgren's Poker B-Roll. Another thing that tends to happen because so many people can now tap into the power of filmmaking is that they simply try to imitate their inspirations, which is absolutely fine as you start out. My studio right behind me is actually a great physical example of this. In the beginning, I took so much inspiration from Peter Lindgren, even when it came to the studio. But as I grew, I came to develop and build my own signature style. And that translated over to how I film and shoot and edit my videos as well. But it seems that the majority doesn't push to a level where they don't have to depend on imitation for learning. And this is where a huge disconnect starts to build. You hear this part of the saying all the time. 
you will never be and there will never be another Peter McKinnon, another Casey Neistat. But the reason for that is because when you are simply an imitation of something else at any level, you don't really add value to the niche of filmmaking. You haven't developed a unique perspective, a unique style or story that can add to the body of filmmaking that's been cultivated over so many years. The only way you can do that and truly become relevant if you're pursuing any level of success on YouTube is, as once again you might hear all the time, by being you and yourself only because that is the only way you can gather those unique experiences, those unique perspectives that only you can bring to life through the craft of filmmaking. Reason number two is that everything has been done before. And what I mean by that is that it's become extremely difficult to impress an audience from a visual perspective. I'm vlogging out here on an absolutely gorgeous location on these cliffs above the ocean, but you don't give a fuck. And that's because blogging has become so commonplace. It became a staple for creating content and as a way for building connections with the viewers. Back when Casey Neistat essentially started a little bit of a vlogging revolution, everyone started to attempt daily vlogging all over the world. You got to experience the vlog format in so many different locations, in so many different lifestyles, and in so many different perspectives. And this cycle of normalizing what once was the pinnacle of video content applies to every era of filmmaking on YouTube. Here's a great example. I'm vlogging and as I'm talking to you, I'm getting epic drone shots of me talking to you to use as B-roll overlay to make this video a little bit more compelling or that much more interesting. And while it does add to the video maybe a little bit, it definitely doesn't have the impact that it once did a few years ago. The truth is, it's become so normalized that you as the viewer have come to a point where you still don't give a fuck. I could run this section of the video without those drone shots and it would still have the same impact. When you take a second to step back and think about it, it's kind of insane to realize how high the level of video production that we've all become so accustomed to is. On top of all of that, with the introduction of short form vertical content combined with the depleting attention span of all of humanity, we can now condense breathtaking and high level experiences into mere seconds, which completely normalizes epic moments and lifelong highlights even more so and at a faster rate than ever before. It actually takes it one step further and completely erases the value of these shots and experiences as well. You will scroll right past an epic FPV drone shot in some majestic landscape as if it didn't take years of skill building and hours of planning to do it. The next reason is that all gear is becoming the same. It's all starting to blend together. And no, I don't mean that from a technical perspective. On that front, it's absolutely amazing what companies like Sony, DJI, and Canon have managed to build. But as an audience member, as a viewer, you are not going to give a fuck whether or not I had used my Sony a7S 3 versus my Sony a7 III to film this video. It doesn't change the quality of the viewing experience significantly. 8-bit versus 10-bit color. Most of you probably don't even know what that means. All you care about at most is that the colors look right on screen. Video technology has come so far that it surpasses the human ability to perceive any real difference. Anything after 4K video is pretty much useless. Our eyes aren't going to show some sort of insane shift in our viewing experiences. Camera technology as far as it's come and as it is now really only serves tech junkies or people who have some sort of career attached to it. And speaking of having a career attached to camera technology combined with the normalization of high level video production, all we have left and what you tend to see on YouTube are repetitive how-to videos and bland camera gear reviews. I've said it before, cameras, drones, GoPros, and pretty much everything else now are coming out like iPhones every year. All of the biggest creators within the niche of filmmaking seem to bank on the next new drone video or the next camera reveal video to keep up the appeal and relevancy of their channels. An example of this is my favorite creator on the platform. Peter Lindgren. The last seven to eight videos have all been of things, camera gears, drone, tech, which is cool and all, 
but as someone who religiously watches Peter Lindgren on a week to week basis or whenever he drops, it's becoming more and more difficult to watch whatever video he puts out with enthusiasm. The last video I truly enjoyed from him was learning how to fly FPV with the DJI Avada and that's because it showed a journey, an experience and not just some sort of long technical explanation of sorts. And this realization that I've had doesn't just apply to Peter Lindgren but to filmmaking as a niche, as a whole on this platform. Even me, a small creator, started out making videos exactly like that and I have done exactly that up until recently. If you scroll through my uploads, you'll only see how-to videos, camera gear reviews, and those sort of bland videos that just don't make filmmaking interesting or add to the narrative of filmmaking. It just goes to show how prominent this lackluster era of filmmaking is currently on YouTube. But this is where we switch gears and what makes me absolutely fired up for the future of filmmaking as we know it. There's an element that's going to stand stronger than ever before directly because of all the negatives that I pointed out. And that element is storytelling. Because everyone can try their hand at filmmaking, because all types of visuals have been completely normalized, because the progress of camera technology seems to matter less and less, the element of storytelling is becoming an even taller pillar of creating captivating video. The ability to convey a completely unique story in a compelling way is becoming more and more valuable and in a lot of ways is the only thing that's going to retain a viewer's attention in a world especially where the attention span is dropping steadily. With the focus of recent filmmaking content being so narrowed into things instead of people, we're starting to slowly see this mindset shift of people investing in creators' journeys, their experiences, and their stories instead of their high-level camera tech, and more so than ever before. And with how far the craft of filmmaking has come on YouTube, the competition has really dialed down to who can become the best storyteller that can take advantage of both a viewer's desire to relate to something and the visual capabilities that we now have access to today. It's coming down to a point where the only thing that separates one creator from the next is their ability to capitalize on who they are, followed by their ability to convey a compelling story. A creator who personifies this extremely well is Nicholas Crystal. His insane growth on YouTube is direct evidence of how powerful of an effect being an impressive storyteller with every video can be. I believe we're pivoting into this era of competitive storytelling on filmmaking, and that's an element that I want this channel to be more and more about as I continue to put videos out. I said in the beginning of this video that I wouldn't recommend starting a pure filmmaking channel, and I stand by that. You should be using the craft of filmmaking to tell captivating stories in other niches that you wanna pursue. That could be self-improvement, that could be music, supercars, or whatever else. And for all creators, this is going to be an extremely positive and uplifting force because it's not only going to facilitate a renewed depth in the craft of filmmaking, but also push for real self-development within the creators and filmmakers themselves. You can't tell your story without having your own unique perspective that was discovered by you taking the initiative to have a unique experience. So with that being said, that cycle is going to birth new storytellers. And with that, extraordinary stories, journeys, adventures, experiences, will continue to be shared at a higher level. And that's something that I absolutely and truly want to be a part of. I hope you do too. Anyways, if you found this thought provoking, subscribe because I'd love to have you. And to all of us that want to tell our stories, filmmaking or through any other medium, it's time to skyrocket.